Okay, welcome back guys. Uh, this is episode something. Uh, next episode on protective gear for self-defense pressure testing. Pressure testing your self-defense training. So we've covered most stuff so far in individual videos. They've all been done. You can see those other episodes in the playlist or in the video description. Um, so be sure to check those out as well um, because this is just the last or second last volume of what I'm talking about. So the, the rest of the stuff I have to talk about, we've covered gloves, we've covered headgear, and we've covered knuckle protection. Now I'm just gonna cover all the other little bits and bobs that don't need that much talking about, but I thought I'd cover it anyway. Okay, let's start with this one, forearm protection. Most of my students will be familiar with this kind of thing, just to cover the, it's, it's just nice. You don't need it, but if you've got particularly bruisable arms, right, when, you, when you're throwing punches in at people and someone's slamming you in there, it just gives you that little bit of protection. Simple as that. You don't need to spend a lot of money on them, pick them up for $20 or something. Just gives that little bit of foam padding, nothing much, just a bit of foam padding over your arms so that particularly you're not getting like a bone on bone clanking or you know down these very vulnerable points on the inside of your arm and so on. It gives you that little bit of protection. Nothing much else to talk about those. Just go and grab a pair. Basically just put it on and smack yourself in the arm a few times if it feels much better than when you don't have it on. It's, it's doing a bit of a, it's doing its job. Okay, that's all I've got to say about those. They're pretty simple. Um, when I use those for my, I don't I almost never use them myself because I've, I've trained myself up so I've got the conditioning that I don't need them. But I do recommend them to students because it means that you can go a bit harder. That's the beauty of them. You'll see people all the time doing different drills and they're sort of, ow, ow, they're not throwing the punches hard because their arms are too sore from the other person blocking them. So you put those on and then you can swing the punch in a bit harder and give the other person some good training. What else have we got? Shin guards and instep. Okay, these are very useful. Even though what we do, we don't do your big powerful Muay Thai kicks and that kind of thing in what we practice. Most of the kicks we do tend to be little heel stomps, keeping it low down to the, down to the ground, or little toe flicks into the groin, that kind of stuff. So these aren't that beneficial in terms of what we practice um, as far as our techniques are concerned, but when we do our scenario-based training, we need to know how to defend against kickers, like a Muay Thai or a kickboxer. So we will wear these for that purpose. Um, so yeah, if we're doing any kind of higher kicks, we'll chuck these on. So that's, that's really nice as well. But, but even though, when we're doing our general sparring, even though we might not throw high kicks or even big sweepy kicks, there's still those times when you're in close and someone might just go for some little short choppy kick and the other guy goes at the same time and you smash your shins together. All right, that's okay. It's not gonna hurt, really. It's not gonna do you any major damage. You don't need them for that purpose. But, you know, maybe you've got particularly sensitive legs. Maybe you've got a skin problem. You bruise really easily, whatever. You might have a reason to wear these. I don't wear them myself. Um, Unless, of course, I'm playing the part of the Muay Thai fighter, for example, and I'm kicking my students, then I'll chuck a pair of these on. Um, by the way, you don't need a really high quality pair like this, like the big, strong, thick ones. Any little simple sleeve, like similar to the arm guard, but in the shape of a, of a shin guard and instep. Um, just to give you that little bit of softness, so it's not a bone on bone uh, contact. So again, that's just an optional extra. If you have particularly soft, you know, sore shins, you don't like your shin clanking on someone else's, it's a nice little thing you can have there. So that's about all I have to say. Again, don't feel like you need to invest in really expensive ones because you're not doing Muay Thai. Uh, oh, sorry, if you're one of my students, that is. <laughs> right, what else do we have? Uh, mouth guards. That's okay. I've I very rarely wear a mouth guard. Do you need to wear a mouth guard? Well, yes, if you're actually doing training where you're getting hit, I tend to have, I've never been unlucky enough to get a problem where I've been hit with my mouth open. The only reason you really wanna wear this is so that if you happen to have your mouth just slightly open and you, you take a hit under the chin, your teeth are gonna to smack together and you can chip a tooth. Again, you don't need to, don't get the double ones. You don't need the double ones, that's overkill. Just a normal, standard mouthpiece. Again, I'm no expert on mouthpieces. I just picked, I just went down the sports shop. So, yep, that look, I'm not gonna get the cheapest one. I'll just get a decent quality one. I think it was $20 or $30. Um, they mold to your, to your jaw. You put them in hot water and then you put them in, bite them, and they mold to your jaw. Um, it does two things. 
It reminds you to keep your mouth closed while you're training, so there's less chance of hurting your jaw when you get hit, but also it stops your teeth clanking together. So again, for myself personally, I only use this if I'm really doing a hard train, like a full on training session with another senior student of mine or like a senior training partner of mine. Um, if I'm just teaching or doing the drills at a sort of moderate level, I don't worry about these. So again, that's a personal choice as to whether you do or don't wear that. But my recommendation is if you're doing heavy training, put one on because it, it will save your teeth uh, and it will save your jaw as well because if you have your mouth slightly open, uh, and get hit on the jaw, it's going to do a hell of a lot more damage than if your teeth are slightly pressed together when you take that same blow. Okay, <clears throat> what else do we have? I'm sure I've got, ah, oh, these ones. Knee guards. Do we need to wear knee guards? <clears throat> knee guards are, again, I wouldn't wear them 90% of the time, but I do, t I, I like to give people the information just in case, because there was one time it's only happened once. I've had several times where knees have smashed together and it's just caused a really painful big bruise. But there was one time, oh, and this happens because you know, you're in a close clinch, so you, may, maybe I go to knee you in the groin, but you bring your knee across just at the same time to stop me and our knees clank together. So bone on bone kind of thing. So that's what causes the bruise and it's not so comfortable. So again, same as I said about the, the shin guards, maybe you wanna chuck a, you know, they don't restrict your movement in any way, just nice, you know, nothing major, just a thin little bit of padding over your knee. Again, any sports store, you can even get them at like Big W, Walmart, your, your normal supermarket type stores, anything will do. You don't need any sort of special high quality, expensive special martial art version of them. Just any kind of a knee pad will do. So long as it's soft and it's not like a skateboarding knee pad, you don't want something hard on the, on the outside because then maybe you hurt the other guy. Um, so yeah, one time I was training, <clears throat> I, I can't remember exactly what happened now, but uh, same thing, our knees clanked together. And it was actually a girl, way smaller than me, but it just happened at the perfect angle where her strong portion of the knee, like the bone of her knee, just got right into a side tendon of my knee. As they hit, I felt a bit of a ow, but it was nothing major. But then I went to put my foot back down, and, ah, and the tendon, it was like it had put it out of place or something. I don't know exactly what had happened there. I couldn't walk. And I was in the middle of a training camp where I was teaching for a week, and I couldn't, I could, well, I could walk, but I, I was struggling to walk for the rest of the camp. And I was like, but, and literally it was that much pressure, barely no pressure at all. It was just a little clunk, but just right on that spot. So that's probably a highly unlikely scenario that, you know, it would have had to have been, it's just a one in a million shot that it was so accurate that it actually moved that tendon and bruised that tendon specifically. Um, but again, if you want to be absolutely sure and you don't want to do any, yourself any damage, any risk, then wearing some knee pads could benefit you. So again, that's a personal choice. Not a necessity, but a personal choice. Elbow pads, elbow pads, little squishy elbow pads like this, okay? These are quite nice. Most of them you just slip on like so, and you'll have a little, little strap there as well just to tighten them. This one tends to be tight enough on me without the strap. It's, it's a perfect fit because of my bulging biceps. Um, <clears throat> so you put it on like that. This is not for my protection. I've never injured my elbow during training, but it just allows you that when, when you're doing your sparring, even if you're doing things like chi sao, you know, in Tai Chi we do ching sao, uh, ching sao, chi sao, wing chung they do chi sao, that kind of, you know, you're in close, you're moving your hands around each other and you're trying to get strikes in on each other. This, with your palm, you can hit people in the head just to say like, oh, you know, gotcha, would have got you. That could have been any kind of a strike, but you can just smack them on the head Smack them on the side of the cheek with light pressure. It's not going to do them any damage. So you don't need to use gloves or anything when you're in that close and just doing light contact. That's fine. But your elbows, most people that I've seen, they always train like touch light contact with their palms, but elbows, uh, they don't, don't actually contact. Because an elbow, that, that little knobbly bone there right on the edge, straight in the back of the jaw, if it hits, if it hits maybe there, that's okay. But anywhere that it hits where it's hard, it's such a solid thing, even just that much pressure with, with the actual elbow, and it really does a lot of damage. So this, you can't do heavy pressure because it's very thin in comparison to a boxing glove, 
it's only like that thick, but at least it allows you to touch. It allows you to do the same kind of pressure that I would hit you with my palm. So I could put that now, just with that, at least I know now, whoa, I got you. Whereas if you don't do it, you might not know if you got hit or not. It's because it's all in so close. I go boom like that. And as I do it, you go, whoop, you move your head, because maybe your hands are all tied up and there was no guard you could have used. You just move your head out of the way. Neither of you know whether you would have, whether the shot got through or not, because it's so close. And since I was only going, I was throwing my elbow to only be that close. I'm not throwing it all the way through because I don't want to hurt you. So in which case, we don't know if it was me pulling the shot that stopped you getting hit, or if it was you moving your head that stopped you getting hit. But now, I can at least touch you with it, with just that light, bumpy force. Now, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, you got me. Or, whoop, no, see, you didn't get me. So you, so you get a better idea of whether your um, head movement is working for you. So there's that. Uh, then it brings us on to groin guards. Okay, do we need groin guards for self-defense training? Obviously, male groin guard, nice and deep. Female groin guard, nice and shallow. Okay. Right, so the first thing about groin guards is groin guards are not designed to get hit in the groin. Okay? Steel cups, people. Move away from glass. Go to steel cups. Um, anyway, groin guards. This is the best one that I've found. I've, I've used a few. I've used a few different types myself. Um, this is a, what's the brand? Low Blow, Low Blow is the brand. This is the Low Blow Thai Cup. And the reason I got it was because I actually saw on YouTube these couple of guys who um, train, uh, who test, tested like about 10 different types of guards. They got all the best guards that people recommend. They literally put them on and then kicked each other in the balls and said like, from a scale of one to 10, how much did it hurt? And some of them it was like, oh, that's not gonna sit down. Whereas this one was like, oh, Actually, that was okay. I'm, you know, it hurt, but I'm all right. So that's why I chose this one. And I have found it, I haven't tried a lot of different groin cups, but I've found it to be much better than any others that I've tried in the past. They're not designed to, you know, they're not like a chest guard or a shin guard, which are designed to take impact there all the time. They're designed for the accidental shots. Again, these are designed by, this one particularly, is for tie boxing. You're not allowed to hit to the groin in tie boxing. So it's only there to protect on the accidental time that something accidentally goes through. So I'm maybe aiming at your leg, but you move and it accidentally goes up there and hits you in the groin. So it's still going to hurt. So the way that we practice groin strikes, we've got to practice groin strikes. You have to train it into your subconscious nervous system to do groin strikes. As soon as you see an opening, whoop, lift your knee up, hit him in the groin. Or if you're at a distance, use your, use your foot. You can even use your hands, if you, you can use your hands to strike the groin. It's a brilliant strike, and it's a brilliant, particularly a brilliant setup. I would say from your hand point of view, you're not gonna stop a fight with a strike to the groin, but it's a great setup. Makes him go down. With your toe even, Probably not gonna finish the fight, but it's a setup. It makes his hands go down. You lift your leg, I've done it to so many people, and they go, ah, oh, and then I punch him in the head. Um, whereas the knee coming right up underneath, that's, that's got potential to finish the fight, or at least set you up to clip him over the top and, and finish the fight very soon afterwards. Um, so anyway, what we basically do is, in the same way, when we train self-defense, we train you can only hit certain, you can hit certain areas hard and certain areas you can't hit so hard. So like if you're aiming at the neck, you can put a, a neck shield on and I've ordered one. I've tried a few in the past, none of them been that great. I've ordered this one that's like a really special, special forces neck, neck strengthening uh, thing that they're supposed to use in hand-to-hand -hand combat and all this. I hope it'll work. I want it to at least allow me, like I said about the elbow guard, I want it to at least allow me to touch rather than doing this all the time. I want to be able to go bump and just tap the neck at least with the fingers without, <coughs> you know, every time you, you touch the neck. So yeah, neck is always light pressure because it's so vulnerable. Um, the groin, always light pressure. Even the whole head, when we have that head mask that we talked about in the head, in the, in the head, head version, the headgear uh, episode, 
Again, you don't hit the head because the neck is still involved. When you're hitting the head and the brain shaking, we don't hit the head with full force. Whereas the torso, when we've got the torso shield on, we hit that with full force. So you can get some training with really putting the power through. Other training, you just get that light to moderate force. So with the groin cup, this is probably one of the lightest things that you would hit. Your own, you're gonna, whatever strike you're doing, you're just doing it enough, just, just that much pressure. Again, it's just enough to notify your partner that he got hit. So he feels it, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. I, I gotta work on my groin guard, I gotta keep my knees together, keep my guard down low. Um, so that's all it's there for. We always aim at the groin. Ever, if ever you see an opening to the groin, hit it, because it's a great vulnerable area to strike. Anyway, yeah, so that's, that's the low blow. As I say, there's lots of other brands out there, you don't have to choose that brand. Um, same brand for the female one. Females, again, if you're only putting in light contact, you're not, you're not trying to hit, but you never know. You might, see, that's the thing. When I go for a knee strike or a kick or whatever, any kind of a strike to the groin, I'm aiming just to touch. That's all I'm aiming to do is to touch. But I might get it wrong, or maybe they drop their weight or move or something as I go to do it, and oh, all of a sudden it's a clunk and not just a touch, okay? So that's, that's groin guards. Um, the female ones, again, okay, maybe there's less chance of hitting something on the female since they're not hanging down, right? It's all, at least all tucked up. But same thing, if it goes through and you get kicked, my wife, not from me, but my wife got kicked once right in there and she'll tell you it bloody hurt. So having that on would just stop that from happening. 90% of the time you shouldn't need that. But if you want to have it just for the in case it goes through a bit too hard, it's maybe a good idea. As I say, 90% of the time I don't use them unless I'm going with a senior student really seriously. So for most beginning students, they shouldn't need it because they're going at a slower, softer level. But that's uh, a little bit of extra information for you there. Right, last thing. I think the last thing is, yep, that'll do us. The last thing is chest torso protection. Okay, I'll just hold this here. I don't want to cover up my mic, but that would go there like so. Um, now this type, I'm actually sending this back because I ordered it and they sent me the wrong bloody one. Um, but anyway, they're picking this up and sending me back the one that I wanted, but I can still use this just to demonstrate the point. Look how thick it is. It's so thick. I've, I've had several of these type in the past. Um, and essentially, I've had people knee me and kick me and elbow me and shoulder barge me and whatever. I've even put ones like that on some really small girls who have never done any martial art training in their life and I've hit it as hard as I possibly can and they feel nothing. They're brilliant. Um, so with those, obviously the idea of those is the attacker, the, the guy wearing the gloves and all the gear, you as the defender, you can, put your, you can put your body strikes in as hard as you possibly can to really get that full force training without doing anyone any damage. Any brand will do. If it's nice and thick, it should do the job. Uh, so there's that type. You can't move that well in them because they are really big. So if you want to be able to move better when you're doing your attacking, you can wear this kind of thing, okay? I would never wear that big one as the defender. So as this whole theme of these videos have gone, me as the defender, I don't want to wear gloves because I want to free my hands up to do my techniques. I don't want to restrict my movement that restricts my movement. So I'd wear something thinner, right? At least if, if, if the attacker's still coming in and trying to punch me with his gloves, I personally never wear one of these because I can take a punch pretty hard to the body because I'm used to it, I'm conditioned. But if you're not, you might, you might want to get yourself one of these. So it's again, another optional extra. It'll just, it doesn't take all the power out. You still got to train yourself to take the punch. If you stand there totally relaxed, it'll t still take the wind out of you if you get hit with this on. But it, it takes some of the pressure out, so that's good. Um, even if you want the attacking person, if you want the attacking person to be able to move a bit better, again, they could wear one like that rather than the big one. So they're just two different options. Again, I've never found any of, well, okay, I've found a couple that suck, that don't do anything, but generally speaking, most of them do their job. One more volume to do. I'll do that next, where I talk about tie pads. Now that's not normally talked about as a uh, protection device, but those particular ones are, in my opinion, designed for protection. So I'll talk about that in the next episode. But yeah, that, that leaves 
every, all those other little nitty bitty bits that are optionals, you can use those for a bit of extra protection, whether you're training in my system or any other self-defense system as to, um, yeah, a couple of pros and cons there of um, all that stuff. Good stuff, guys. Next volume, I'll just quickly talk about these briefly and then that'll do us. Oh, as I said, I did, I have ordered a throat protector um, from a, a company called Spartan. Um, they usually only sell stuff to um, government organizations like, like military and that kind of stuff. Um, but they said I could have one. So, but, but because I'm only ordering one piece, usually they get their orders in for, because it's from America, the company. So they usually get all their stuff in when someone makes a bigger order, like a government place placing a large order. So I've got to wait until someone else places an order and they can like add mine in and then send it out to me. Um, anyway, so whenever that comes in, I'll probably do a separate review on that as to, well, if it sucks, I won't bother reviewing it. But if it does work and you can put a bit of force into it, I'll, uh, I'll let you know about that particular piece of equipment. So that's me done for this lesson. Good stuff, guys. See you soon.